Welcome to the Injurati uh, studio. We are located at the CTICC Africa Utility Week 2014. And we have two speakers this time, um, first day of our uh, conference. Um, first of all, I think I'm just going to introduce you as you, as you speak, but um, firstly I've got um, James Arnott. Uh, you're the Managing Director Resources of um, Accenture Capital Project Services. That's correct, yes. Um, Hayley, I'll, I'll introduce you and then I'm just going to go back again and um, we'll take the conversation from there. Um, Hayley Walters is the Managing Director of Operations and Innovation, uh, Management Consulting Portfolio Lead. That's quite a, did I get it all in? <laughs> of Accenture. So um, this should, should prove to be a really interesting conversation. Um, you are mostly, you are sort of global perspective and Haley is more of an African perspective. So uh, feel free to interject um, you. When, you, when you see the need. Okay, when you see the need arise. Um, the, the first question that I just wanted to ask you, um, James, is, you know, what is, you know, what is your um, role? Um, on a global perspective, and, and then I'm going to ask Haley um, her perspective on, okay. on the company's role. So within the Accenture the business, yep. we have a, a capability that yep. effectively helps our clients, typically the owner-operator, yes. to facilitate or better execute their capital project portfolio. And what that means is that we have a look in terms of how Accenture can be relevant to our clients in the areas of outsourcing, um, systems integration, or management consulting within the capital project context. And that typically tends to revolve around things like the engineering data management components and the associated document management, right. the execution of capital projects from a project management office perspective, the portfolio management, the risk management, and in many cases for our number of clients to provide a set of functional services as they build and develop and evolve their capital projects particularly in geographic domains that are challenged around education, local workforce, um, capability, etc. Because everybody has an expectation of a world-class project, utilizing world-class tools, etc. There's and generally sometimes, a lot of money involved as well, so indeed, you need to make sure it works sure. from the outset. And so, so my role is to yeah. help um, our account teams um, better understand our offering as Accenture and our clients in terms of what we have to offer and then to prevent then to bring a set of uh, thought leadership from other geographies, other industries, and how we can apply them at in a local context. Um, now, your focus is, is global. So yes. you, you were saying, what are the areas, the regions? So that I you look focus after on? Europe, yep. Africa, Latin America, and that also includes the Middle East. Okay. Um, I was speaking to somebody earlier. Um, risk management is uh, apparently a big keyword at the conference at the moment, and um, there's a, white, a few white papers that are going around that I'm chewing into today. And um, it, it would appear that risk management has perhaps maybe been overlooked in a lot of projects and there's certain um, parts of the project that are not being looked at in a holistic point of view. Um, and there are gaps and money is being lost and projects are perhaps failing because there isn't sufficient um, risk management. I, I, is that um, a trend that you're seeing across the board because projects are becoming so much more complex now? So many more role players? Sure. So let me answer the question slightly differently, but yes. I will answer your question. Yeah. We did some research on uh, the execution of capital projects within the utilities industry. Yes. Mm -hmm. And from the research, um, the various organizations said that there were three key challenges that they faced in executing capital projects. The first was the ability to understand or work within a regulatory environment that is sometimes misunderstood or emerging from a capability perspective. The second issue was associated with the ability to find talent, both in order to be able to execute the build and also the ability to be able to run the build of the asset once it was created. And then the third aspect was spending more time in terms of doing better front-end loading associated with how to actually execute the project. If we put the risk management paradigm on top of that, you can see that in actual fact, you know, having a good risk management strategy means that we better understand the regulatory environment and the associated pros and cons and what we can do about it we can understand what we can do from a talent perspective, from a risk perspective, or from a planning perspective. So I think that risk is one of those themes that is essential to everything. Um, I think it'd be hard to kind of pull it out separately, but to understand how risk mitigation can potentially work across a variety of, uh, of disciplines, domain areas, etc. Do you think that if there was less risk involved, and it was proven um, by a particular company, do you think that the, um, the it would be more bankable, you know, the, the bankability would, levels would increase, that investors would come running and banks would come running to, to invest. Do you think that that's a major issue, is that because there's risk involved? Sure, so I think when we look at risk, we look at the you know, yeah. probability versus the impact, yes. uh, and it's kind of a, a two by two quadrant. 
in most organizations, they'll have a capital project lifecycle model and they will move the project through various stages. Yes. And in each of those stages, they will develop a risk profile associated with whether or not the project does or doesn't become bankable. Right. I think the challenge um, around the risk discipline is the associated maturity, but alternatively, the optimism that people have. You know, the project becomes important to the individual, important to the organization, and sometimes the the clarity or the ability to accurately interrogate a risk, um, be almost clinical in it, is sometimes not as well done as it could be. And I think that's wherein lies the challenge. You know, so the bankability yes. gets yeah. undermined as a consequence of organizational ownership, etc. Yes. And so, you know, I think we think of donor organizations that provide funding, particularly into Africa, around a number right. of projects. Then the you know, the maturity of risk or having a third party effectively validate the risk becomes right. the mechanism that's often put in so place. So outsourcing is, is quite a good option you know, for utilities to, to follow uh, just because it, well, it does make it more sort of objective, you have a clearer perspective of, of what the risks really are, if they are, well they generally are, um, because perhaps maybe talent isn't there, uh, maybe in certain regions, yes. so there's a, a bit of a skills gap there maybe? Yes, I think you know, organizations like ours, this is Accenture, you know, will provide a mechanism by which the risk can be you know, assessed against a variety of, of other factors yeah. or potentially bring in other factors. Um, at the same time, you know, to your point that you made, it's you know, in part its skill, but also it's in part the maturity of the discipline that may exist within an organization. Okay. Because things are changing really, um, you know, there are new trends um, taking place in, in the electricity industry and I think Africa is probably the biggest region um, undergoing major change at the moment and you know, uh, the, the talent gap, the skills gap is clearly a, a major issue so outsourcing is, is quite important, it's quite critical. Um, Haley, can you expand on that at all um, with regards to having to outsource, you know, how critical is that? So just to bring, uh, just in terms of my role, yes. um, so within the broader global organization and the capital projects, in yes. Africa we've got a very focus on capital projects and on infrastructure development. Yes. And so beyond the owner operator, we're also looking to support the service providers yes. to the owner operator. So those companies that are building the locomotives or helping the independent power producers, um, yeah. also doing some of their building, their construction. Yes. And so risk takes on a different perspective yes. and our sourcing takes on a very different perspective because where the African continent is, while there has been some investment in infrastructure through PIDA and in through locally in South Africa through our PRCC agenda, we still are at the advantage of taking the risks that we've learned around the global, the global uh, entities right. and bringing those to Africa and taking those risks and building them in to our planning as we plan out the infrastructure um, programs and yeah. the capital investment programs in this country, uh, in this country yes. and on the continent. Um, from an outsourcing point of view, I think that the, the benefits that you have of bringing in an outsourced provider is that much of the work done in, in, on the continent is done by a consortium. It's a yep. group of parties that it's not just an owner-operator scenario where you build yes. for the operator. Um, so if we look at uh, even in the rail um, infrastructure development program in South Africa, yep. you know there are a multitude of parties involved. Yes. And bringing in and outsourcing certain aspects, not only risk, but also helping do some of the integrated planning, looking at some of the supply development programs and the localization programs. I think there are multi multiple avenues where someone like Accenture can help yes. from an outsourcing program. How easy is it for a company like Accenture to actually um, access the market in Africa? Have you come up against any challenges, obstacles that you'd like to share and, and how are you overcoming them? I'm not sure that there are unique challenges to Accenture accessing right. the market. I think that the infrastructure and capital programs um, in Africa have additional complexities to some of the complexities that we would have experienced in our global research. Right. Um, you know, our regulatory framework, uh, taxes, mm -hmm. and getting funding. Yes. We're not necessarily building against a business case to generate cash. Right. We're actually building against business cases for economic development, for the development of the population. So there's a social aspect to it. Right. So, well, so getting the funding from the World Bank and other such institutions has a very different set of criteria and yes. therefore you monitor it against a set of different criteria. Obviously within the regulatory frame, framework and the political stability are all factors that influence Africa right. much more so than in many other places that we, we've done research. Right. And so you know, we, I think that the, the challenge that maybe 
Accenture as a service provider yes. is probably not we need to Accenture. It's, it's the challenge to the infrastructure and capital build programs in, in Africa. Okay, all right. And I mean, they will be easily overcome as experience is, is pulled upon from various parts of, of um, the world. Um, I mean, has, has Africa got a lot to learn, um, you know? I mean, I think Africa has a lot to offer. Yes. And yes, I think that, does. you know, our, our success will be determined in terms of how well we are able to take that capability harness you know, it, and yeah. harness it. Yeah. You know, we have you know, a, fun, you know, a great opportunity in terms of the South African power pool, the, interconnected, the interconnectedness of the grids, etc., to facilitate sub-Saharan African growth. But it requires, you know, constructive relationships between governments, for example. It requires the ability for the actual infrastructure to be put down and so on. We have the ability, you know, with Angola, uh, Mozambique more recently with the oil and gas, for example, to be able to introduce other components into the, into the energy mix from a, a gas perspective. Um, uh, you know, we have, you know, Nigeria now becoming the largest African uh, economy as such. Yeah. You know, the role that it's going to play, its challenge associated with providing its own electricity demands given its growing population. You know, and you know, somebody mentioned in the plenary this morning about, you know, Nigeria, Nigerian citizens generate their own electricity. But that electricity generation happens as a, as a base of consuming the oil. And so, you know, we'll see as you know, the economic growth develops, people become richer, they'll consume more local oil, yep. and that will create a challenge for them from a country perspective. So, you know, their growth will be determined by that. So I think, you know, there's a lot to offer. There's a lot to get right. Um, I think, you know, to the point that uh, Haley was making about the consortium approach, about being able to draw on a number of capabilities. And then I think the, um, the caveat to your question about outsourcing will also be, what is the local content expectation? Yes. We have to ensure that the capital build develops new economies, develops the supply chain, develops the actual citizens of the of the country, etc. And I think that's the role that government will play in terms of creating that platform for uh, for broader economic development. I mean, at the end of the day, government's got to be on board, and if they're not on board, you know, a lot of projects are going to fall flat. Um, you know, have you found that that's maybe as far as regulation is concerned, um, especially from an Africa perspective? You know, there's this perception that it's that it's sometimes a bit tricky to do business within Africa, uh, not just because of conflict in some regions, but just from a regulation point of view. Um, maybe set aside finance for the moment, but just from a regulatory point of view and politics point of view, you know, is it is it really that difficult to to get in there? I mean, is it getting easier? I, I think. I mean, if you look at South Africa yeah. in terms of the PRCC agenda, yes, I think that the government is very committed to the infrastructure yeah. development of the country. Makes a huge they understand the economic impact that it will have. Yeah, and I think that it's in it is mandatory yes. actually for private enterprise and for private partnerships to form to support the government's agenda. If they're there, they've provided the finance. They've yep. provided the uh, governance and the infrastructure to do that. Now we need private enterprises to really come and help yes. develop our certain local um, industry sectors. And they're willing. And they're yeah. willing. Um, and we've already seen a couple of really good success stories um, in our both in our utilities area and in within the rail sector. And I think Fantastic. if we look and take the South African um, focus of government and we look broader outside of South Africa as we go into sub-Saharan Africa. Right. I think there are like governments who are, have got the investment set aside, they've attracted the funding and now it's up to you know, the right partnerships to come and private enterprise to come and actually support the agenda of the build yes. program but at the same time leaving a local industry that can continue to maintain, will continue the, the build and also then maintain um, which is going to provide the jobs, local forward. jobs, which are so so needed on the and continent, and skills. skills and you know, what we, as well. James was talking earlier about yeah. the Nigerian example of you know private in, private ho households generating their own yes. um, the utility, their own uh, power. power. Well, that's all good and well, but that doesn't necessarily contribute contribute to the social agenda. It doesn't contribute to the economic stimulation of the. And of it's the probably country. not very sustainable though, is it? Right. Well, it's sustainable for the small households, for short... when households are only such a small portion yes. of the utility, of the, the power usage, of the energy yes. usage. So I think it's really important from a government's point of view to focus on the social agenda, absolutely, yes. but it's got to also be intertwined with the economic development of the country. So if you're going to stimulate manufacturing, we have all the global consumer goods companies wanting footprints in Africa, yeah. um, all making big dollar investments and in building up new manufacturing plants, brewing, etc. Yeah. Um, they need the, the utilities, the water, the power, etc., to be able to do that manufacturing for the consumers. It's, it's, 
is, I mean, there's an incredibly exciting trend um, overseas. You're, you're writing a lot about um, uh, microgrid, uh, microgrids, energy storage. It's, it's very exciting overseas. Uh, Spain, UK, Germany, a lot of people are going off grid. And I, and I read recently that um, there is a mine in the Limpopo region that is actually now developed a solar farm. Um, and they're, they're going off grid. Do you see this trend? you know, um, developing as time goes by? Do you think that the utility needs to change its business model? So, so I think the, the off-grid is a double-edged sword. Yes. Um, by virtue of the fact that the ability to maintain that off-grid requires a set of skills, etc., and an expectation yes. associated with the maintenance, we may not, which may not be provided by the national utility. So there is an opportunity for for small maintenance organizations, et cetera, to do that. But the, the challenge of off-grid as well, and if we look at you know, places like Germany, the Netherlands, et cetera, has been that self-electrification has created challenges associated with the baseload expectation, that yes. there's always the expectation that the utility will provide the baseload, but potentially puts the utility at risk from a financial perspective because it's, yes. it's difficult to maintain it. And then on the other side of that, we have the challenge associated with the management of the actual grid operation, that, you know, we, what grid operators want is consistency associated with supply. So, you know, a, you know, a day when the sun shines brightly and the wind blows is a nightmare for, you know, self, you know, or, or countries that have self-generation because all of a sudden there's excess capacity on the grid and it doesn't get stored, etc. So, I think off-grid, again, like the, you know, self-generation provides, you know, some opportunities but the actual interoperability and the connectedness of the network is going to be the, the key integration challenge. integration is going to be a big Absolutely. challenge. And, and I think that's where energy storage solutions are just going to be such a game changer Indeed. within the um, energy industry. So it's going to be interesting to see where Africa goes um, with regards to that, um, you know, with big mines, big industries, you know, going off grid. It, it will be interesting to see how Indeed. those projects, um, you know, are funded and how they go forward. Um, to both of you, uh, what are you seeing at the conference? Is there a particular trend, opportunity, disappointment? Perhaps you've seen something that has not developed as quickly as you had hoped. Um, what is your perception so far? We're only a couple of hours into the conference, but I'm sure you've, you've picked up something along so, so the way. So perhaps two perspectives. Yeah. I mean, I think if we look you know, just around us on the floor, yes. you know, the significant number of service providers that are here yes. actually understanding that there is an African energy agenda. Yes. And I think that that, you know, that is heartening to understand in terms of the opportunity, etc. I think, you know, based on the, this morning's discussion from a plenary perspective, you know, the word that I came with was this notion of collaboration, the need to collaborate around standards, the need to collaborate in terms of inter-country trade associated with energy, the need to collaborate associated with lessons learned, etc. And so perhaps we'll see that continue through the course yeah. of, the, of the next two days. Who knows? Pulling all the resources and Indeed. making a better place. Um, Haley, yeah. anything from your side? My key observation is, um, again, you know, lots of interesting service providers. We've, we started with a plenary session this morning. Yes. Some very interesting, very discreet views around water, um, around power. Yes. And I think um, you know, we've got to find a way to bring the integration. And I think that that's where the role that Accenture plays yes. as a service provider onto the continent, as so a service provider into the capital projects and infrastructure space, is we bring that holistic perspective of the life cycle of the program as well as the maintenance thereafter and we kind of provide all the services that help integrate all of the discrete yeah. uh, you know, phases in the, in the program or the project as well as all the service providers that can help uh, with the infrastructure with the capital. Building. Absolutely, it's one big team at the end of the yeah. day because not one entity can, can uh, carry it. So uh, yeah, um, uh, thank you so much for taking time out oh, of your busy you. schedule. I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference and, and that you enjoy much success while you're here. Perhaps we can catch up with you before the end of the conference just to find out if there have been any developments and, and what your viewpoints are. Okay, thank you very much. Your pleasure. Thanks very much. Uh, to our viewers, thank you very much for joining us. Um, please remember that um, there are a number of interviews that we will be conducting uh, throughout the two days of the conference. Uh, so feel free to tap on those and, and watch them. Thank you.